It's almost impressive that I was able to procrastinate making this video for 11 whole months, but um, anyway, here's part two of the assembly series. In this video, I mostly want to go over some of the basic kind of uh, patterns that you'll see in um, more high level language like C, such as loops, arrays, structs, etc. And I want to kind of give some insight in how you might go about converting those um, like a compiler would into assembly. So I guess might as well just get started somewhere. Uh, this is loops. So loops are one of um, one of the most basic constructs of any program, right? And this is this is how you'll commonly see loops kind of manifest uh, when you're working in assembly. So um, the thing with assembly language is that there isn't really different types of loops, right? While loops, do while loops, and for loops, they basically all kind of become the same thing, just in a different order. Um, just these sections are in a different order is what I mean to say. So I'm going to just kind of talk you guys through what's happening here. So um, this program is pretty simple. First, we start with our usual like function body stuff, um, setting up the stack. Then um, we move zero into R12. So R12 is basically going to be um, like the variable we store um, that we're looping over. So this will be like int i equals zero, right? Then in our loop head, um, it compares R12 to 10. So this is i is less than 10. If it's not equal to 10, so, um, or like this could be also jump less than, right? So if it's not 10, then we jump to the loop body right here. And the loop body basically just moves, um, one second, yeah, it just moves the string um, to RDI, moves R, um, R12 to RSI and calls printf. So this is just gonna print print like the numbers and then we increment r12 and we jump back up here to the loop head so sometimes and i know um quite a few like ides also do this i like to just draw some arrows for myself just to kind of help understand the control flow and you can see what what's essentially happening here is we have a loop we're jumping from here to here and then back up there and then here to here and back up there. And this will keep on going until R12 is equal to 10, in which case this jump not equals two will do nothing. And then we just reset the stack and return. Just like with loops, arrays in assembly are also, they're not as like formalized as you might imagine. Because in like a language like C or C++, we have like um, with like the notation for the arrays and when you write it in the function, it feels like you're declaring a different type. You're declaring an array of 10 integers. But actually, all you're really doing is you're just allocating some extra space. So in this uh, program, I think uh, I'm declaring a hundred character. I'm declaring um, an array of chars, uh, which is a size hundred, so hundred chars. And I'm just using get to take in a line of user input. And then I'm um, here, I'm just taking this format string and just printing out the uh, whatever the user typed in. So it's a very simple program, um, but like you shouldn't really focus on like the printf stuff because we've already covered that. Um, I mostly actually here wanna focus on how uh, we allocate the array on the stack. So the way it works, is we just set up um, our stack frame by pushing RBP and moving RSP to RBP. And then we just subtract RSP by like the amount we need. So if we wanna like have a hundred bytes, we can subtract it by this much. Um, I think uh, I, I subtracted by this because I'm pretty sure in Mac OS functions need to be 16 byte aligned. Um, so, that, that's one thing that, that can catch you out sometimes. Um, the Mac OS ABI just assumes that all functions are called on a 16-byte alignment, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later on in this video. 
Um, but what this essentially means is if I just kind of draw a little stack here, right, this is our start function here. When it calls our main function, we can just move um, RBP like quite a bit um, below, sorry, we can just move RSP a long way down so that we just have a hundred bytes of free space here. And then um, we can think about this space as if it was a uh, char array, but honestly, it's, it's pretty much equivalent to just allocating, like it's pretty much equivalent to just allocating a hundred chars on the stack because they are the same thing. The array notation is just like a convenience um, that's like available in most like higher level languages like C and C++, etc. Right? Um, there's also this uh, command here, Lia, um, which might be unfamiliar to some of you guys. Um, what this essentially means is load effective address. So what it does is instead of like this notation where you have like brackets is like a dereference operator. So it's like the asterisk in, um, in C. Right? So we're saying, okay, the value of RBP, right? Take like the pointer, so this thing, minus it by 112. So one sec, I'll just draw it. RBP is here, right? Minus it, I'm sorry, my bad. RBP is here, right? Minus it by 112. So we're going to this place where our char array starts. So this is going to be our array. So this is now, um, so this thing, RBP minus 112, is basically this location, right? And then uh, we dereference it, which basically says, okay, now get me like the first character in this array. That's basically what this is saying. And then we use the Lia instruction to get the address of that character. So this might seem a little bit complicated. Um, like, why are we going through all of these steps? Can't we just say RDI equals R, RBP and then um, sub RDI by 112? And you can, like a lot of times that is um, the thing to do. But um, modern computers have like a very nice feature where when you need to subtract like a number by, uh, by a multiple of one, two, four, or eight, because those are such like, because that operation is so common, right? Because so many programs need to index through like int arrays, long arrays, char arrays. Um, there is like, uh, like hardware built into your CPU that gets this done in one CPU cycle. So even if this was an array of like ints, right? And then I needed to go RBP um, minus four times 20, right? Maybe 20 ints down the stack. I need to, I need to move down. So I have to have that. It's, it's still a lot faster to do it like this because this only takes one instruction, uh, so one CPU cycle, while moving it and then subtracting it takes two instructions and two CPU cycles. So uh, again, this is a pattern you'll see a lot and it might seem like counterintuitive, like, oh, we're first dereferencing the, uh, the pointer and then we're referencing it again. Why don't we just directly subtract it? That's why. Right. And then the rest of this code should be pretty trivial, right? We just call gets, um, again, move uh, the format string, which is just percent %s. And then here, again, we're doing the Lia thing, right? We're just loading the effective address of the start of a char array and then calling printf. So that's arrays. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about functions and specifically some function optimizations that you're going to see a lot. So you guys all know like the basics of how we set up the stack in macros, right? We, we push the base pointer and then we move the stack pointer to the base pointer. And there is actually a few good reasons to be doing this. Um, first of all, um, a lot of operating systems, macOS and Linux, uh, like they, they definitely prefer if your code is aligned at a 16 byte boundary, because for some operating systems, it makes it a lot faster to move code, um, to execute the code. And then like for some operating systems like Mac OS, it, uh, it just assumes that. So there's a good chance that your code will just seg fault um, because it, it just assumes that everything's 16 byte aligned. And if it's not, um, that's, that can cause a problem for certain like operations. Um, but 
this is like quite a few instructions, especially if you have like a very small function that doesn't really need a stack frame, right? Um, so here I'm, I'm just defining this function inc, right? It's, it's like a fairly trivial function. Uh, it basically just takes the value in RDI and returns one plus that, right? And then I'm just printing it out again, pretty simple, right? Um, but here you can actually see the function body for inc and you'll notice that we're not actually setting up the stack frame, right? So like this push and move command, we're actually not doing it because if I'm just gonna draw another very scuffed stack frame for you guys, what we're essentially doing is we have our main function here, right? And then we're calling some other function, but we're just saying, oh, this function is not gonna need to allocate any, it's not gonna need to allocate um, any memory in our stack, and it's also not gonna call any other functions, right? So we can deterministically say, so like if we can deterministically say that all the operations in this function, they don't actually need to be 16 byte aligned, right? Because when you call a function, what it basically does is it stores the return address. So this is the return address. This is this bit here, right? So this will be the return address. It stores it on the stack right before, right before, um, the new function body, right? So suppose I wrote ink normally, I I need to, my ink function would be here, right? And this is incidentally why we usually push RBP and then have all of this shenanigans. Because if you imagine, right, this here could be 16 byte aligned, right? So this address here is a multiple of 16. Um, and then most things in the function, and then everything else in the function will also be 16 byte aligned just because, right? So this is like a multiple of 16. When we push a pointer type like ret, like the return address, like a pointer type, this is not actually gonna be 16 by the line because the pointer type is eight. So if you imagine like 32 plus eight would be 40, which is not a multiple of 16, right? That's just a dumb example. But that's usually why we need to push RBP as well. Or you will again see sometimes um, they subtract they they um, subtract the base pointer by eight, um, which is another way of accomplishing the same thing because we can't have our like we don't want the start of our uh, function frame to begin on like a non sixteen byte aligned spot. But that being said, um, for functions like this, right, where you're not doing where like you can say okay, none of these operations need to be sixteen byte aligned you can just save on a bunch of instructions, right? So you can save on like three instructions, basically this push, this move, and this pop instruction by just directly writing it like this. And of course, I guess um, an actual optimizer, if you're actually trying to optimize this function, what, what would happen is it just be inlined directly, right? Because that would be, I guess, the next logical step if you want to optimize it further. And a lot of times you'll just see like if you have a small function like this, your compiler will just basically copy paste the code there, copy paste the code here, and then just match all the registers. But this is also another optimization you might see a lot. That's functions. Okay, and um, this is, finally we're gonna just cover structs really quickly. So this is just some trivial struct, it doesn't really matter. The main, um, the, the main point I want to make about this struct is that it's, it's bigger than eight bytes. So that'll come into play later as I explain some of this code. And now this is written in C. Um, apologies if you don't understand C, but like, it's, um, I don't know. I, I would definitely recommend learning it, especially if you're interested in this assembly stuff. Knowing some C is like a very good way to translate between assembly, so yeah. Anyway, this function is fairly simple, it just, takes a pointer to a struct, and then it sets some values of that pointer and returns the pointer, right? So we're basically, um, someone allocates the structure, gives us a pointer to the structure, and then we basically just initialize it with some values, right? And you can see a pretty trivial example of it being used here. We're just allocating a struct on the stack and then we're initializing it, right? Now, um, if you wanna take a look at this code, um, how it plays out in assembly. It's like surprisingly, um, I guess it's again, surprisingly simple. They're, they don't really have 
like a large conception of the idea of struct. It's a very, uh, how should I say this? Like, having a struct isn't like very significant in assembly. It's, it's actually fairly, it's a fairly trivial thing. And um, you'll just see that in the code, right? We just start off with a regular function header. And then uh, we know RDI, which is our first argument, is a pointer to our struct, right? So then we literally just move um, like five, six, and seven into the uh, keyword pointers um, with the correct offsets, right? If you remember, our our member our members of the struct are um, longs, so that means they have a size of eight, right? So the the start of the struct, if I just draw out like the, how the layout of the struct is in memory, it will be just be like this: a, b, c. This will be the pointer to the struct, right? So. The pointer to A will be the pointer to the struct. The pointer to B will be the pointer to struct plus 8. The pointer to C will be the pointer to the struct plus 16, right, which is what we're doing here. Um, this keyword pointer notation is also something else. It's, um, I guess the way you can think about it is how many bytes should you move the 5 into, right? Because you could imagine if maybe um, without this keyword, this thing could be ambiguous, right? So maybe you want to move five into the only the first byte, only directly what A points to, or maybe you want to move five into like a, a char, a short size object, or maybe an in size object, or maybe a long size object, right? Again, it just like depends what you want to do. So that's why uh, a lot of times, especially in the Intel assemb um, the Intel syntax for assembly, which is what NASM uses, you'll see keyword pointer as just a way to signify that. Um, if you're ever reading some AT&T code, so that's generally what you'll see when you disassemble uh, using GCC or something. Um, you'll see the AT&T syntax. They just like make up fake, I guess, uh, assembly instructions that like move L, so like move long or move Q for move quad, right? But that's just like a notational thing to express that. And then, yeah, we just return here. And then our main function, again, this should seem familiar from the array example, right? We just um, set up the function, then we just subtract, we just subtract some space, and then again we load the address of where our struct is going to be, and then we call the function. Right? Um, but one key point I just wanted to make real quickly is that um, this code here with the pointer is actually identical to this code here that I've just commented out, um, except. I'm passing everything by value. So in this case, my function just returns a struct and my main function just directly calls it, right? The assembly code produced is functionally identical to the assembly code produced in this case. And the reason for it is really interesting. It's because um, the x86-64 architecture only has two registers for return values, which means you can return a maximum of 16 um, 16 bytes so um, like your your C compiler whenever you return like a huge struct it automatically um, inserts an argument into your function and uh, returns this so um, sometimes it can be pretty confusing especially if you're trying to disassemble code you'll see oh I'm, I'm trying to return a struct but for some reason they're passing this weird pointer to my function that's why and um, I guess this is the point where I'd probably advocate usually returning by value because I, I feel like a lot of people, they prefer to um, write their C code like this where you pass in uh, pointers and um, you then return like the address of the pointer or you like modify the pointer or whatever. Um, I would probably uh, recommend though just directly using values and letting your compiler decide this stuff because... I think this code just looks a lot cleaner. And of course, uh, the compiler does know better in these cases. But yeah, that's how structs work.